Hey guys, welcome back to Bioinformatics with R. Uh, today we're going to get into some actual bioinformatics data. We're going to get into some microarray data. Uh, as I said in the previous video, microarrays are a bit uh, outdated and they're not really used much anymore, um, but they still have value because that's a lot of data. Uh, that's on a lot online that's easy for you to access if you're doing meta-analyses or things of that nature. Um, Isaac, how many times have we tried to record this video? Too many. Uh, we've had some technical difficulties throughout recording this, so hopefully it runs smoothly. Um, I had done these analyses a long time ago and the packages have been updated and compatibility issues, but that should be all taken care of on the Praxis system. Um, and hopefully I'll take care of on my system as well. So let's get into it. <laughs> Alright, so the first thing you'll notice here is that we have a whole bunch of libraries that we have to uh, load in to run these analyses. Um, so the first thing you'll see here is uh, this Arabidopsis uh, database library. Um, there's actually two of them. Um, I'm going to put them together here. Um, so both of these are Arabidopsis database to give us some gene annotation and some additional uh, information about each gene that we find differentially expressed. Uh, same thing with the annotate package, it kind of works with that. Uh, AFI is a package to run AFI metrics data. Uh, AFI metrics is a specific type of microarray, so depending on the actual maker of the microarray that you used, You'll have to use different. Um, Agilent is another one, but AFI seems to be, I think, probably the most po uh, popular um, microarray. Uh, Lima or Lima, I've heard it pronounced both ways. Uh, that is uh, a package to do regression analysis to find differentially expressed genes on microarrays. Uh, Oligo kind of partners with that. Dplyr, uh, you remember from data wrangling where it is to kind of you know, reshape your data. The other thing, reshape is similar, but it's not part of the tidyverse. And since these are older analyses, uh, the tidyverse wasn't as prevalent as it is now. Um, so we'll have to use some reshape for a few of the functions. Um, and then stats, that's pretty self evident It's a statistical package. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to read the cell files. So you should have the cell files in your My Files or your working uh, directory, the same directory that you save this. Oh, um, let me go back real quick. So I'm setting my working directory here um, to where my R script and my cell files are. Um, for you, if you're doing this on Praxis, I have the code here, set working directory, desktop classroom, my files, and that should be where your cell files are located um, as well. Um, so we're gonna read cell files into the directory, um, but first we're gonna do our targets. Um, so our targets, we have six cell files, three flight for uh, plants that were grown while they were on a space shuttle, uh, back during the space shuttle uh, era, and three that are ground control. So we're comparing how plant, how gene expression changes when you're in space versus when you're on Earth. Um, so we need to tell R which samples are which. So you should have a file that you copied over called um, brick 16 targetscsv um, and it's a comma separated file, uh, CSV. So sep equals, oops, sep equals commas. Uh, so it knows how to read it. And then row names equals file name. So we're going to convert the file name column to the row names. So let's run this real quick. And you see that we have uh, the row names are the same as the file name here, and then we have our gravity condition, whether it's ground or flight. And now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to read F. Let's call this variable AB. So we have an AFI batch here um, where you can see. Uh, this is just all the AFI data 
uh, read in from those cell files. So we'll start to process it here in a second. Um, okay, so let's look at a histogram quick of these um, microarray experiments. So I'm going to zoom because it's under my picture here. So as you can see here, um, we have the six experiments, and this is the intensity of expression. So um, how, remember microarrays, they look at, they use a hybridization method that has fluorescence, and so they look at how brightly something shines, and that quantifies how much of the RNA is present, okay? And so this is the intensity of the brightness or the expression, so the intensity is really the count of the protein or the, uh, the RNA, right? And then we have the density. So this is showing per experiment kind of the average intensity over the entire experiment. So you can imagine that there could be some sort of error based on the chip or based on the RNA prep um, where some experiments just have a lot more RNA than others, right? And so uh, this can be an issue. So what we have to do is we have to uh, normalize the microarray experiments. All right, so we're going to normalize the microarray experiments. Um, so we'll do this a new variable called ESET, which stands for expression set, um, and we'll use the AFI package and RMA, which is a. Let's see if it comes up. That says what it is. Popped up for a second. RMA. RM. Uh, here we go. So RMA is a function that converts an AFI batch back object to an expression uh, object using the robust multi-array average expression measure. So it's a way to normalize these, and we'll see how that looks in a second here. Um, so we're gonna run this. So it's back on correcting, normalizing, and calculating the expression. And now let's uh, plot the data, P data, for E set. Um, okay. Actually, so we run that function. Now we're going to plot the data. Okay, so we're going to do histogram of E set. Uh, let's actually annotate our code. Uh, so. Let's visualize the normalized data. Okay, now let's run it. Okay, so now if I zoom in on this new graph that's under my picture here, you can see that compared to the last graph, it's a lot tighter of a fit of these experiments over one another. Um, so let me go to the last graph here. So you can see there's a lot of, like here's the peak for one experiment down here, and here's the peak for another experiment. Um, once we've normalized it, we get, you know, all the peaks are in this little tiny area here, and it's a nice tight fit. So we can compare across microarray experiments um, after we've normalized like this. Um, okay, so let's go down here a little bit here. Um, so let's kind of. Um, Let's characterize the data a bit. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna um, create a variable called IDs, which is the feature names of ESET. So if we click on, uh, so if we load, we'll do head, because we don't wanna load everything. Head of ID, you can see that these are the probe names um, for each gene in the, um, on the microarray. So symbol is another uh, variable that we'll say get uh, symbol, which is from the annotate package, of ID. So what we're saying is take all these IDs, look in the Arabidopsis database, 1121501.db, and get the gene symbol for it. So if we run that, and now if we say head symbol, you can see now we have 
the probe name, but the also the actual gene symbol. So if you read like a scientific paper or whatever, um, this is what generally they'd use, right? Um, and now let's do AFI data, a new variable, and say read dlim. And um, we're going to use this ath1 array elements file. So this should be one of the files that you copied over. Um, this is just a kind of a data table of a whole bunch of gene annotation stuff that comes from TEAR, which is the Arabidopsis Informa Information Network. Um, it's where it's kind of the consortium that publishes the genome and has a bunch of information on just Arabidopsis. And so they publish this file. So we're going to run this. And so if we look at AFI data, you can see we have the, the element name, so the probe name, um, what type of probe it is, so oligonucleotide, so it binds to RNA or DNA, um, the organism or Arabidopsis, the locus, so this is the actual gene um, annotation for like the genome, um, the description, so what kind of gene it is, so an NADH dehydrogenase subunit 4L, um, the chromosome, so this is uh, M is mitochondrial, uh, C is chloroplast, and then when we get to numbers, these are actually like the chromosome number, right? Um, we also have the start and stop location on those chromosomes, which is kind of cool, um, and that's about it. So gives us a lot more data to work with um, to actually, uh, you know, annotate and, and, and make biological sense, because that's one of the big issues with bioinformatics is that a computer science uh, scientist could do bioinformatics but the issue then becomes how do you interpret the data and put it into a biological context um, and I actually had this conversation with a uh, another faculty member just yesterday talking about you know computer scientists they have all the tools and this is not a knock on computer scientists it's just a different mindset um, and they have all the tools and they can do all the coding but you have to be able to take what is spit out of your analyses and then make apply it to biology right and to, to say this makes sense or this doesn't make sense um, and so this is going to give us some more information on how to turn our analyses and answer biological questions um, so the next section here um, is we're actually going to do uh, differential gene expression analysis. Um, but for sake of brevity, and I know you all like short videos, I'm going to keep it short here um, and we'll break this down into another video. Um, so we're off to a good start. We've got all of our data loaded in essentially. Um, what we have left is we're going to um, run the differential gene expression analysis and then make some biological sense of it in the end. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.